around 300 protesters stormed Namibia's parliament on Tuesday. Inside, lawmakers had been due to vote on a $1 billion compensation offer from Germany. That's to atone for its genocide against tribes people in its former colony more than a century ago. But demonstrators from the affected communities say it's not enough. They climbed over fences to enter the parliament building, led by traditional leaders and opposition figures like McHenry Venani. For the last 31 years, the SWAPO government has received more than $1.1 billion from the German government. The Germans listen very carefully. The Germans say they are guilty of murdering us, but for this guilt, they are paying the same amount that they've paid governments for the last 31 years. German colonial soldiers massacred thousands of Herero and Nama people between 1904 and 1908. That's after they rebelled against German rule. Survivors were driven into the desert. Many ended up in concentration camps to be used as slave labor. Some died from the cold, malnutrition and exhaustion. On May 28th, Germany announced an agreement to fund projects in a southwest African nation worth more than a billion euros over 30 years. Foreign Minister Heiko Maas apologized and officially described the slaughter as a genocide for the first time. I'm extremely happy and very grateful to have reached an agreement with Namibia on how to deal with one of the darkest chapters in our shared history. A pro-government faction of the Herero and Nama has provisionally accepted Germany's offer, one of its leaders said, and the parliamentary vote is likely to pass. Good morning, everyone. It is really a true honor to welcome the Prime Minister of the UK to the capital of the United States. He has been welcomed earlier on the other side of the capital, and now it's my privilege to welcome him to the House. I was just showing the Prime Minister a picture of when Winston Churchill came to speak to the Congress, 1941, day after Christmas, a few weeks after Pearl Harbor. Why it was special to me is my father is in that picture, Thomas D'Alessandro from Baltimore, Maryland, listening to the Prime Minister of, the UK, uh, of Great Britain uh, at that time, uh, Winston Churchill. And now today we welcome another Prime Minister. Fantastic to see that picture of, of your father uh, with, with Winston Churchill. Absolutely amazing. I had, I had, I had uh, no idea that that had taken place. Uh, uh, folks, everybody, listen, I just want you to know that for me it's, it's a, a very important moment coming here to, uh, to, to speak at Pelosi's office because all my life uh, America has stood for uh, some ideals and uh, their freedom, uh, equalities, uh, human rights, uh, but above all, democracy. And I just want you to know that uh, we stand by you uh, shoulder to shoulder with you in, in sticking up for our values, our beliefs, in, uh, in democracy in, and in sticking up for, for parliaments and assemblies of the people around the world. Thank you all very much. Thank you. I was walking with my friends. They dared me, whether I could take it away or not. I pulled it. The woman fell off the curb. I tried to pull my hand out, but she twisted my hand together with the bag. I tried to pull my hand out. I dragged her across the ground. When I freed my hand, I ran away. I didn't take anything. I just ran away.
China's President Xi Jinping has declared that his country stopped building new energy projects abroad that use coal, a move that was immediately welcomed by the United States and the head of the United Nations Climate Change Conference. The announcement at the UN General Assembly could affect 44 coal plants earmarked for Chinese state financing, totaling 50 billion US dollars, according to Global Energy Monitor, a US think tank. That has the potential to reduce future carbon dioxide emissions by 200 million tons a year, the think tank told Reuters. Environmental groups said it would force big coal financiers like the Bank of China, linked with 10 gigawatts of overseas coal power capacity, to draw up a timetable to withdraw from the sector. Beijing is the largest source of financing for coal power plants globally, and Xi's announcement will have a far-reaching impact on coal power expansion plans in countries like Bangladesh, Indonesia, Vietnam and South Africa. However, Xi's carefully worded statement revealed few details and left room for existing projects to continue. There are already more than 20 Chinese-financed coal-fired power units under construction in the world, according to data from the Boston University Global Development Policy Center. Another 17 are in planning stage. The new commitment also doesn't address China's plans to expand its own coal-fired power plants. According to a report published by a European think tank, China's domestic program accounts for more than half of all the coal-powered plants under construction through the world. It was almost good news for turkeys. A surge in gas prices cut output of fertilizer and the carbon dioxide produced as a byproduct. That could save all kinds of livestock from the slaughterhouse, as the gas is needed to stun animals before killing. Now the UK government is spending millions to support CO2 production, and the turkeys once again won't be looking forward to Christmas. But the 250% surge in European gas prices this year has the whole region worried. On Wednesday, energy ministers from across the EU met to discuss emergency measures. Italy and Greece say they are considering subsidies or price caps to shield consumers. Spain has urged the EU to organise a more coordinated response. In Brussels, the European Commission says it's looking at what tools it can use. On Wednesday, ministers also discussed speeding up the shift to renewables. Kadri Simpson is the EU energy commissioner. Europe needs to invest into renewables because they are really offering an alternative on our dependence on imports of fossil fuels. And we have to invest also into the new energy efficiency measures. That stance will be welcomed by Greens, but it won't help European industry right now. Makers of steel and cement are maintaining production, but say they face colossal price rises. Leading fertilizer maker Yara International is cutting European production and importing from elsewhere instead. The UK has warned food producers that CO2 costs could rise by 400% even after Tuesday's deal. And all around Europe, consumers will be keeping a wary eye on their fuel bills. Um.